Hey, this is Zero Reviews on HD, and I'm bringing you as a review for Family Guy Back to the Multiverse for the PlayStation 3. And I really didn't know what to expect heading into this game as I couldn't find any gameplay footage for it before it released, which in most cases means the company's trying to hide the fact that they're about to release a pretty awful product onto the store shelves. But the game actually turned out to be decent. The gameplay remained at a reasonably entertaining level without ever really hitting many dull or bright spots. It's about as average as it gets. It uses both an original script voiced by the real cast of the show while recycling a lot of one-liners pulled from various different episodes. It does contain one major technical flaw and I have a couple gripes to discuss, so let's go ahead and get into the review. This title reminded me a lot of one of the first games that I reviewed on my channel, which was the 2008 release of the Simpsons video game for the PlayStation 3. The level design, the cutscenes, even the gameplay in some sections felt exactly like the Simpsons title. And that's certainly not a bad thing, as that was one of the best looking games back in 2008. The graphics on here don't really feel dated, but there was never any point that I was exactly blown away by any special effects. And it does rely heavily on using the same looking enemy character models. As far as the big technical issue that I mentioned, at the beginning of this video, I did come across a bug that froze the game six times during my playthrough, and it always happened while switching characters or weapons in the menu mini wheel. That's the only time it happened, so it has something to do with the game accessing that menu. The strange part is I was still able to return to the PSN dashboard, which was unusual with a game freeze. Normally it locks up the entire system, so that was a new issue that I've never encountered in a game before. But for it to lock up that many times, I definitely don't think it was a fluke. There's a bug that will hopefully get patched at some point, but the game checkpoints enough that it really never caused any frustration. It was just a bit of an annoyance. Arg. Arg. Please don't tell any of me mateys of this. They all think I'd be good at pirating. So who is your favorite Family Guy character? If your answer was anything other than Stewie or Brian, then not only are you incorrect, but you may be a bit disappointed as you have to play through the entire story with both, with the exception of one very quick level featuring Peter and the Chicken as they battle it out in an airport. You do run across a lot of the other characters in the main cast as you're playing through each mission, but it would have been nice if you could swap out or unlock other characters that are available to use in all of the other multiplayer modes. Speaking of multiplayer, if you didn't catch my video discussing the modes, this title does not feature online play, which which is a bit of a shame because it has some pretty good local co-op modes that would have been fun online. Without giving anything away to do with the story, the entire game felt like an extended episode of the show, and it uses multiple cutscenes before, during, and after each mission to help drive that home. The story itself was pretty much just an excuse to travel to some pretty cool Family Guy type locations and fight against a few well-known characters, and the script and the dialogue was exactly what you would expect out of one of the weekly episodes. The controls were surprisingly good, but I did have an issue with the fact the game has an auto-aim function that cannot be turned off. Most games that have auto-aim generally give you the option to disable it, so that took a bit of an adjustment as I'm not a big fan of using that in other games. As far as the game difficulty, I died a few times in the platforming jumping sections of the game and a few times on the boss battles, but overall the main campaign was a bit on the easy side of things, which is probably for the best. But if you do manage to die, you don't get a game over screen, you just respawn at a nearby checkpoint and it takes a small percentage of your total cash away. The cash in the game is used to upgrade your character's health, ammo capacity, and to unlock new weapons and costumes. There's also not a lot of puzzles or anything that's going to require a lot of brain power to work your way through. It's pretty cut and dry run and gun gameplay. I certainly don't feel that I'm a prude or have a bad sense of humor and when I'm not recording kid friendly commentary for my channel I curse as much as an angry pirate. But this game does go a bit far into the deep end of the offensive pool. It makes fun of handicaps, religion, women, and everything in between. A good part of just the dialogue in this game would get most people fired or sued for discrimination in the workplace, so it's definitely rocking the mature rating for good reason. But if you're a fan of the show, then you're probably used to its vulgar form of South Park style comedy and slapstick jokes, so it shouldn't come as a shocker. 
I personally own every episode on DVD with the exception of the last season that released, so while I knew what to expect, I could also see a lot of people getting easily offended by the dialogue in this game that may not be used to its style of comedy. The game doesn't take itself too seriously and I wouldn't advise anyone wanting to buy or play it to go into it thinking that it's a serious game. It's a fun romp through Quahog with a few gimmicks to keep you occupied an extra few days, but it's not really going to compete with the juggernaut titles that have been releasing over the last few weeks, and it's not one that I would recommend putting at the top of your Christmas wish list unless you're just a huge Family Guy fan. It's not a bad game by any means and I was actually kind of surprised that it was decent, but it does rely heavily on jokes and comedy to keep the plot and gameplay rolling and as funny as Family Guy can be, that still doesn't equal up to anything more than just an average experience. I do think it would be a very awesome rental or worth buying once it hits a discount bin, or if you want to play through the entire game and challenges with a friend in local co-op, then it could be a reason to go ahead and pick it up this year. Anyways, this is Zero at Reviews on HD, and thanks for stopping by.